everybody and welcome back to Quilter's Apothecary. Today we are continuing our tutorial series on the feathered wreath and we are going to be utilizing a, fe a simple feathered wreath in a square block shape. So let's come over to the machine and I will show you an option to do that. Okay, so as we start this particular wreath, of course, we have our square shape, and I have marked a very small circle in the very center that's going to signify the center of the wreath that's not going to be feathered, that is not the spine. We are now going to utilize the spine, and I have chose a three and a half inch inner circle from Quilter's Apothecary, and which are the puzzle piece rulers, and it's going to be a three inch finish circle, and that's going to actually be the spine of the circle. Again, the one thing we also want to remember is that we always have an extended base whenever we are doing any type of ruler work. Now with this particular Quilter's Apothecary circle, which is one of the inner circles, what we're going to do is lift the handle portion because it's a puzzle piece that fits together so it's nice and smooth and firm. I'm going to bring my machine over, get it in there, and now very simply I'm going to handle up top and just very simply lock it down on that puzzle piece. If you feel you want some more sp stability, what you can do is utilize a piece of our tape and put it right under. I don't always need that, but sometimes it gives that added security. And then you have your handle as well as your hands that are keeping the circle shape stable as you work around to quilt in that small shape. We have them for the inside circles like this for people that can't hold the smaller rulers, the, especially the circle shapes. It just makes it a little more stable for people. And we also didn't want to notch so that that way as it works its way around, it's going to be nice and smooth and not hit a divot and slide in. Okay, so now I'm going to line up the crosshairs on this circle. And there are lots of different marks, but right now we're just looking at the crosshair marks and centering that right into the center of the block. I'm then going to go ahead and bring my machine over and I'm going to go ahead and lock my stitches. And then I like to just go ahead and snip my tail so it's not in the way. I'm going to hold my circle stable, keeping one knuckle under the handle. And I'm going to work my way around the circle, making sure to keep it centered. Come around and meet up exactly where we ended. Get rid of the circle for the guide. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to feather the inner portion of the circle. And then I'm going to show you how I utilize the outer edge of the block to feather the outside. And again, I am actually using the stitch regulator to do my feather fronds. And I am using a 200 start speed on the Innova with the lightning stitch. Um, for those of you that usually will ask how I'm stitching and what speed I'm using. So I'm going to go on the inside here and I'm going to start with my feather fronts just like we did with that first basic wreath tutorial. Come around, back, over, come around, back, over. As I come around there then I get smaller again to work around the inner circumference of that wreath. Again, we want to try to do a visual fool the eye into making sure we see a round shape in the dead center. And even though the feather fronds are not all the same height, you'll get that visual effect when you use the stencil type feathers. Come around, close that off. Now I'm going to come around the outer edge. And you can either utilize the same rounded type feathers to come out here and do them at different heights or if you want to, what I like to do is to utilize the double bump, or some people call them the boy feathers. Come out, the bump, curve around. Come out, the bump, curve around. And again, you're using the edge of the square as a guideline to stop the outer edges of your frond. Coming into the corner, the bump, right into the corner, come around. Come out, the bump, come into the corner. Curve around. Remember, you're always tucking your fronds under and into whatever it is you're utilizing as a spine. The bump, come around. Lay it in, the bump, come around. 
Lay it in, ba bump, come around. Lay it in, ba bump, come around. I'm going into that last corner. Ba bump, come around the corner, come around. Ba bump, curve under. I've got that nice angle for my last feather frond. I come down, I'm gonna lock my stitches. I'm gonna use my sew clean to get rid of the blue mark and you have a wonderful feathered wreath in a square shape. And it always looks wonderful no matter what size square it is. If it was a bigger size square, what you would have done is you would have added veins to each feather frond, which would have of course locked your fabric so you don't get the floppy fabric thing going on that we don't like. Come away, grab my thread, pull up my stitches, pull away, snip, I'm good. And remember I took four stitches forward in the space that it would have been about one or two stitches and then I came back another four stitches. Again, we're using dark thread here. I'm going to move away with my machine. I'm going to use my Sew Clean and my little syringe applicator. Get rid of my blue and my little dot right there. I hope you've enjoyed and have a wonderful day and take care of each other. We'll see you down the road. Thank you.